Picture one, the Queen's grounds. Now this shot is the Queen's grounds and it's part of the Alice in Wonderland series. It was a two day shoot in the Lake District of England. Now what's quite interesting about this shot is the model had only eight attempts at running down this path to create this absolutely spectacular image. It is actually my favorite from the whole series. I'm gonna tell you how it was achieved and it's not just down to the lighting. There is more down to the choreography of this shot than anything else. And I'm gonna walk you through it now. Firstly, let's have a look at the lighting. It looks very complicated and actually it is quite complicated. This is how I did it though. The main key light on the model is a Chimera softbox. And it's placed over here. Shooting in here, we've got this lovely soft look. The second important light is the backlight, which is buried way behind here in the distance. Now, this is just using a kill spill, shooting along through, through the archway, and it's actually overexposing the bush here. But you know what, I don't mind that. The truth is, there is no such thing as the right and the wrong exposure. Ultimately, so long as there's detail there, it's what pleases you. There's another little mistake here as well. If you have a look at this smoky effect, this is the light hitting the water vapor and causing flare. I could take this out with post-production, but I'd like to keep it in there. It gives a little bit more three-dimensionality. So we have the two really important lights, one for the model, one shooting through the archway, giving this lovely little kiss on the cheek. Now we have to light the rest of these beautiful bushes. Now, the important thing to remember is I'm lighting for detail. So I'm not lighting straight on. I'm bringing in the flash from the sides and the flash is coming in from here and also over here. So we have the two lights here, then we have two lights, one here and one here, lighting up these bushes in the background. So that's four lights we're up to now. Now these were both with kill spills, the same Ellen Crom kill spills which just leaves this one here. Now you can just see it spilling through this hedge just here. It was uh, once again an Ellen Crom Ranger. In fact, these are all Ellen Crom Rangers that we're using in every position here. And it's giving lighting up into this branch area just here. Now, we're, there is a tiny bit of Photoshop on this because what we have is in the original we have some branches coming through here, which look a little bit unsightly. So we have some cloning in this area to take those out. And we've also added some extra roses. In fact, here's the original raw, completely untouched. You will see that really it hasn't varied a great deal from the finished article, apart from the Photoshop here and adding an extra rose or two. As good as the lighting is, and I'm very proud of the lighting in this shot, that for me isn't the important part. It's the movement and the passion of the model. Look really carefully at how her dress is swirling. Look how her arms are moving and look at her sheer physique. It's fantastic. How was this achieved? Choreography, all down to choreography. She's actually starting her run way back here, right the way through the arch, and she's running on a line of coins. So she can see the coins out of the corner of her eye, and she just has to run straight on those coins. And she's told that when she hits, or reaches the end of this hedge, just here, she's to look to her right, to somebody who's standing off here. So she gets the perfect eye line. That's how we managed to nail this shot quite so quickly. I can't stress enough though, if you want really dynamic, exciting shots 
and you want to make a model look like she's moving, then actually get her to move. It's pointless just getting people to look slightly like they're moving. She's running absolutely flat out with her arms swinging. That's where we're getting this fantastic look. I shot this picture at 125th of a second at 5.6, raced at 100 ISO on a phase one P25 back, Hasselblad H1, using a 50 millimeter lens, which is roughly equivalent to a 35 millimeter lens on a normal 35 millimeter DSLR camera. So slightly wide angle to get a dynamic look. Now, why did I take it at such a low ISO? And with this shutter speed combination, well, I always like to use a very low ISO to give me these beautiful details with no noise in the shadows. And I exposed it like this at one stop under ambient, which means the sky goes a lovely dark blue and all the background way back here is fading away. The only thing that's showing up is the areas that are, I'm lighting. The key point is though, it lets me freeze the model as she runs through. One more key point about this whole shoot was practice and preparation. As she was getting a dress put on, which was quite a big job, I got my assistant, Justin Staley, to run through several times to work out my focus point so I could fine tune my lighting. So when the model was finally finished, mate being made up and having a dress put on, we could get the shot in the eight shots that I mentioned. In fact, here they are. You can see at the whole series, I've actually got quite a few which could have made the grade, but this is my favorite. So preparation, pre-lighting a shot, and getting your assistant to run through exactly in the same place ensured that I got this picture looking the way I did. So closing points, what's key about this photograph for me is the movement, the choreography with good, solid, planned lighting. If you like this video, and I hope you did, why don't you check out some of the other videos in the range? They're packed full of interesting facts which will help you take your photography onto the next level.